Now, are you ready for a quiz? What was your first phone number? Do you remember it? How do you remember it? Every memory you ever made or ever will make has three steps, encode, store, and retrieve. Now, what was the name of your first grade teacher? Now, that question has just a little bit more emotion than a phone number. Now, what was your first pet's name? There's even more emotion there. Where were you when you heard about President Kennedy? Where were you on 9-11? Emotion. How is emotion involved with memory? It helps you remember. Emotion is centered in the part of the brain called the amygdala. The amygdala is about the size of the end of your thumb, about the size of an almond. It's located in the center of your brain and you have two of them located right next to the hippocampus. They work in tandem. The hippocampus is your memory maker, about the size of a seahorse. In fact, it looks like a seahorse. And when your teacher was recalled by you, or when you recalled your first pet, chemicals, brain chemicals, and electrical impulses were triggered in order to locate and then retrieve those previously encoded memories. When we show you, or if we're able to show you, photographs of your classmates from grade school, or ask you to start telling stories about your first pet, what we would be doing is accelerating your brain's chemical processes and potentially creating what we call a neurochemical cascade. A neurochemical cascade that floods through your brain and then through your system. Not like in gravity, but it radiates. Now picture this. Three of us are walking, wonderful day in the woods, and we're hiking, and two of us are ahead of the other, and suddenly you and I see a snake in the middle of the oh road. Oh my gosh, what is that? Is and that a snake? And we freeze, and that's freezing so we can decide whether we're running away that's a big or we're going to fight, fight or flight. Our hearts start pounding. We start sweating. Our hiking companion comes up from behind. He doesn't even see the big black snake, so we shout out, watch out for the snake. Hey man, be careful, there's a snake up he here. He stops, he looks, he starts laughing and says to us, you mean that big That's black a stick? Snake. That's a stick. Nice try. Nice try. While he continues down the trail laughing, his brain is getting a chemical, but not the same ones we're getting. We're getting cortisol and adrenaline. When we saw the snake and reacted that way, those brain chemicals are already cascading through our body and our brain. When we were told that's not a snake, it's a black stick, they stay in our brains. And if you have too many of those false alarms, we can call that post-traumatic stress. Now brain-derived chemicals are expressed when your brain is stimulated by anything. That snake, that was really a stick. The smell of cinnamon rolls the sight of a puppy, the sight and maybe the giggle of a baby. It doesn't have to be your baby, anyone's baby. Add to the mix a whiff of Johnson's baby powder. You're going to be triggering what we're calling a neurochemical cascade. And one of the best ways to think about how you can trigger neurochemical cascades for your loved ones or for yourself is an old-fashioned, time-tested method and it's simply stopping paying attention, and smelling the roses. So think in terms of what might trigger all five of your senses.